Hey, Nate Barr, how was it last year finding out that you had made history as the first composer to be double nominated in a single year for outstanding original main title theme music for your work on The Americans and Hemlock Grove? Uh, it was really exciting. It was, um, uh, I'd never been nominated before, um, and so to get two nominations, I, I got up really early that morning to check it out and went down the list, and I was like, oh, The Americans, fantastic. And then I kept going down the list to see who else was in it, and I was like, oh, my God, I'm like Grove. So, yeah, it was, it was really uh, a really cool thing to, uh, to have recognition for that. All right. uh, so that theme for The Americans it kind of starts very startlingly, like, uh, like a monster that jumps out in a horror film. So, like, what went into that decision? Yeah, I think... Um, we had so little time, it's about 24 seconds, so it's not like a, we have a minute to really lay it out. Um, like like shows like House of Cards, there's a much longer, more involved uh, main title sequence. Um, so it was really like, let's grab the audience you know, by the scruff of the neck right away and, and really uh, get, get them right into the show. Um, so, yeah, when I first heard 20, that we had like 22 to 24 seconds, I was like, wow, that is, <laughs> that is not a lot of time. So um, it was sort of like, let's, let's get as much musical material into the, that space to really get the audience in. Okay, you pack a lot in there. Uh, yeah. So the Americans are set in the 80s, uh, so do you try to give the score like an 80s flavor, and what does that actually mean in terms of instruments or techniques? Yeah, I don't. We didn't really go for '80s in terms of the sound of the score in the main title per se. Um, I certainly referenced some '80s scores that I enjoyed um, in throughout the show, but in the actual um, in the actual main title, uh, it was more about um, coming up with a something with a Russian flavor, but not too overtly Russian, like the you know Red Army Choir, nothing like that. Um, so it, it, sort of the yeah the eighties eighties um, vibe is sort of more handled by the songs a lot of the time um, that were you know current back in eighty one eighty two. Okay, so this season you actually wrote an original song that appears in one of the episodes. Uh, so like, what goes into a decision to record one of those? Like, is this just another revenue stream, or did you tell FX that like this is in your wheelhouse, so you could use it at some point? I wrote that song with Pete Townsend from The Who, and so um, the show's um, producers and the music supervisor, PJ Bloom, we had all discussed this idea of, of how cool it would be to write an original song for the show with sort of an iconic musician, uh, composer, and um, so we, we reached out to a whole bunch of people big names in the industry, and Pete responded that he was a fan of the show and was a fan of my music, and so he, um, uh, yeah, he called me one morning in Topanga Canyon, which was just completely surreal, you know, this is a guy I grew up listening to as a kid, and to have him on the other end of the line was very exciting, and so uh, he was an enormously lovely, humble man, and um, we kind of talked about the technical aspects of um, how we were going to accomplish this since he's he's over in UK and I'm in Los Angeles, so we have yet to meet actually, which is which is also funny. But the, um, you know, thanks to technology, it was all possible. So I wrote um, at the top of the season. I wrote two tracks and recorded two tracks here in my studio that I felt honored the world that we've set up musically in the Americans, but were could be more interpreted in a song format. Um, and I, I sent those uh, those tracks over to Pete on a server, and then he uh, about a week later uh, sent back lyrics, um, his uh, vocal part, and guitar stuff. And so that was really uh, amazingly exciting. And then we found a we we weren't exactly sure what scene it was going to be over, so we kind of waited a bit, and then. Um, had two or three montages pegged as good places to feature a song, and um, when uh, we finally found like the ideal one, and then I went in and sort of produced the track a bit more and uh, cut and tailored it to the scene, so it really sat well in that scene. Okay, so like that's not the only song that's been in the American so far. Uh, like, what goes into a decision to have one of those or? Like in the first season, I think there was even a song by The Who in The American. Yes. So how come sometimes you know you have songs like that as opposed to just uh, your own score? And like, are you offended when that happens, or 
Not at all. No, I think I think um, I think songs and score both serve very specific purposes in a movie or a TV show, uh, and I think uh, particularly in a show like The Americans, which is very rooted and based in the '80s, it's really important to sort of engage the audience in as many ways as possible and really take them back to that time. And one of the ways to do that is to to introduce music into the show that we were all listening to, you know, back then. Um, so that's something that can't be accomplished with score per se. So that's uh, that's um, it's. Uh, I'm always a big fan of, uh, of 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 songs in 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 TV shows and movies in the right places. I mean, every once in a while, um, there will be a movie or or, or a TV show where um, there's a really big scene, and it will either be a song or score. And so I remember like a show like or a movie like Dukes of Hazard. There was this big action sequence in the middle of the of the movie, like this big car chase, and it was like six minutes long. And for a composer, it's like, wow, this is really exciting. I'd love to do this. So I wrote this six-minute piece. I had Billy Gibbons from ZZ Top come in and play guitar. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's like I can do my work and do it really well. And Billy came in, did an amazing job, but they wanted to really bring a song into it, so it ended up being Led Zeppelin. And, uh, you know, there are those moments which can be um, frustrating. But at the end of the day, they, they do serve different purposes. And I think there's a need for, for both, particularly in period pieces. Maybe if they tell you in advance, you can get a three-day weekend or something. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you also worked on True Blood for HBO and Hemlock Grove for Netflix. Uh, in addition to your career in film, uh, your most recent release being the ensemble comedy The Big Wedding, so what sets uh, each of these scores apart from each other and defines them in your mind? I mean, True Blood uh, has been an amazing ride. It's been uh, seven years now. We're on our seventh and final season. And that was a show where the show's creator, Alan Ball, um, was really uh, supportive of really experimenting with music and sound and really coming up with a unique identity for the show um, as far as music goes and, and everything else. He, he managed to do that as well. Um, and so I think, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, cello and prepared piano and all these sorts of sounds in, in the True Blood score. Um, and then Hemlock Grove, it's kind of a lot of the same instruments, but it's sort of a more of a tip of a hat to like the gothic, sort of a gothic sound. Like in that show, those characters inhabit this like Roman uh, and Olivia, you know, they, they live in this uh, amazing old home. And so I think the music was sort of like more um, tailored to like what they would have been listening to back in the day living in those homes, like chamber music almost. Um, and the big wedding <laughs> was a completely different uh, thing altogether. It was just sort of a light-hearted uh, orchestral you know, uh, romantic comedy score, um, which was fun to, uh, I mean, it, the, the d diversity you get to experience as a composer working in film and television is one of the most exciting aspects of doing it because you get to, you know, try so many different uh, genres and, and sounds yeah, based on whatever the particular project is. That's one of the things I love most. Okay, so in addition to writing your music, I understand that you also perform on, like, a lot of the instruments as well. So has this been the case uh, in your television shows as well, where there's a faster turnaround? And why do you do so much work in the first place? Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, fortunately, a lot of the shows uh, that I'm doing, like Hemlock Grove, like True Blood, uh, and, and like The Americans, they all require, um, or they, they all allow for a smaller ensemble sound. And so that's a sound that I can create on my own. Um, and I do, I do love that because it sort of engages uh, the performer part of the brain in addition to the composer part of the brain. And composing, at the end of the day, is really about improvising for me, and I think for, for most composers. And so uh, I'll sit down with a mic and a cello and watch a scene and start playing. And, and uh, it's really, um, it really feels more like one step instead of two. It's not like I'm writing it and then going to perform it. I'm actually writing it and performing it at the same moment. So in the, at the end of the day, it actually saves time. Um, and it also um, sounds great because it's, it's live players. It's not sampled instruments. Is there one show that you feel you would like to be recognized for this year? 
I think a lot of my work in the Americans is is exciting for me, particularly the Pete Townsend song. Like that's such a unique experience for me. Um, so I think getting recognition as a songwriter a bit, in addition to the the underscore, is uh, is is uh, makes makes sort of that the show this year that would be would be uh, something to be recognized for. Okay. I remember the Marshall Eagle episode, which is a nice one, having uh, particularly a lot of music and good music. So is that the episode that you submitted for the Americans, or did you find that there was a different one that was... Uh, it's funny you say that. That is the episode I submitted for the, yeah, for the Americans. Yeah, it felt like a very uh, score-heavy episode um, with a lot of different kinds of score. So yeah, you, you nailed it. <laughs> Thanks very much for chatting with us at Gold Derby, and good luck at the Emmys this summer. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure.